Good morning. Good morning. I've never had such a crowd on Sunday morning. <laughs> what a privilege. What a privilege to hear your enthusiasm. What a privilege for me to stand here at the Congress of a party I have admired all through my adult life. What a privilege to be allowed to speak at the party that once was in the hands of Olof Palme, a man who was a massive inspiration to all progressives of my generation. It is Olof Palme who introduced me to the horrible fact of apartheid. He's the only politician at the time in Europe who spoke about this. It is he who mentioned the name I had not heard before of Nelson Mandela. And it is he who led the international fight against apartheid. Olof Palme is also a man who said, there is no we and they, there is only us. And my friends, this is precisely what the elections of the European Parliament on the 26th of May are going to be about. There are political forces across the European Union in every member state, also in Sweden, who instrumentalize we against them who think that there is protection in fear for the other, who believe that we can only be better off by building walls, by excluding others, not on the basis of what they do, but of who they are, on the basis of their religion, on the basis of where they come from, on the basis of their gender, on the basis of their sexual identity, on the basis of the color of their skin. And we, as social democrats, have a holy duty to say no to that sort of politics. <laughs> this is what the election is about. It's about the soul of Europe. Let's be honest. As Primo Levi, this Italian Holocaust survivor said, there is in every single one of us the possibility to be afraid of what is different, to look at others with suspicion because they are different. That is part of human nature. But I would say coming out of enlightenment and coming out of our movement, civilization is about keeping that virus small and away. And the extreme right is about fostering that virus, making it big, making people victims of their own fears, and transforming that fear into hate for others. That is what we see, that is what we will not accept, that is against the fundamental values of the European Union. Very concretely, very concretely, this is about democracy based on the fact that respect for minorities is at least as important as the will of the majority. We have known for centuries, um, as it was put um, long uh, time ago uh, by President Adams of the United States, democracy that is not tempered by law is tyranny of the majority. And we are a continent, Europe, of minorities. Even the biggest population, the Germans, are at the European scale a minority. So the European Union cannot exist without full respect of the rights of minorities everywhere. And this means, very simply put, that democracy, the rule of law, and fundamental rights are equal partners, equal legs in a tripod. You cannot instrumentalize democracy against the rule of law. This is what the governments in Hungary and Poland are doing. They say, we have the majority, so we decide who becomes judges, and judges should do what we say. 
This is at odds with the fundamental position of us in Europe. Secondly, they also believe because we have the majority, we can tell the press what they write and what they say. No, freedom of the press is essential for European society and we will stand up for that and fight for that. They also say, They also say that they stand up for Christian values. Well, as a Christian, so do I. But then let's have an honest conversation about Christian values. Christian values is not saying to women you should go back in the kitchen and make a lot of children, but shut up. And I say this to you, I am a convinced Feminist. I've been for many years and I've been very outspoken at international level at the UN, etc. And at the beginning people were ridiculing me for saying it. No more. Because people understand this reactionary movement is about taking away rights from women and we will not let that happen, ever. And at the beginning of my fight for equal rights, I was always saying, I do this because I have two sons and do two daughters, and it is unthinkable, unacceptable for me that my sons and my daughters would not have equal rights. I want my girls to have the same opportunities as my boys. But since then, given what's happening in our society, I've gone a step further. I want this for me. For me, equality is something I want also for myself. And I hope to convince all men in Europe that it's also men who should demand equality between men and women. It's not just about women, it's about men as well. You know, Olaf Palmer also said, Politics is to want something. What is it we want? We want our children to be able to dream again. We want to be able to ask our children, what is it you want to do in the future? And then we get a positive answer, an optimistic answer, and not, I don't know, I'm afraid. We want to make sure that we put our trade unions in a position again to really bargain for the people who have jobs and we want people to have steady jobs, not zero hour contracts. We want to give them that security with a, a decent pay and a minimum pay at European level in every member state, negotiated by our trade unions. That's what we want. We want to transform our economy to a sustainable economy and this is urgent. The longer you wait, the more difficult it's going to be, the more costly it's going to be. And we want to show that this can be done in a social way. So where we want economic and ecological sustainability, we also want, and this is something that distinguishes us from our friends the Greens, with whom I agree on many issues, but we want to start with social sustainability because we will not get the European population behind our agenda for sustainability if they don't see that we start with social sustainability that guarantees their right in the workplace, that guarantees a decent pay, that guarantees social protection when they need it. That's where we will start with our sustainability agenda. And I want to salute, I want to salute the Swedish government and I want to salute Stefan Löfven and let's, in whose hands, in whose hands is Olaf Palmer's heritage better saved than in the hands of Stefan Löfven? <laughs> we want all these things and we want them now. It is time. It is time to stand up for a sustainable Europe. It is time to stand up for a Europe based on values. It is time that we give a voice 
to the silent majority in our societies who do not want confrontation, who do not want to be chained to hatred, who do not want to ex exclude others but want to work with others. It is time we would be their voices. It is time that we show that there is an alternative to hatred. It is time that we show that we can create a sustainable Europe and do it very quickly. quickly. It is time that we learned our children to dream again. It is time that we show that there is no difference in equality between men and women. It is time that we put an end to the pay gap. It is time that we put an end to the pension gap. It is time that social democracy takes the reins and takes Europe into a brighter future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's win this. Let's win this. Go for it.